welcome to CUNY Salutes Valedictorians and Salutatorians, the 2021 edition. I'm Tina Beth Pina from CUNY TV, and it's such an honor and privilege to meet with some of the best and brightest from our 25 campuses in person. The global pandemic has gone on for over a year, but that didn't stop any of you from your great accomplishments during a very unusual academic time. We're so excited to be able to see you in person and we're equally, if not more excited, to be joined by our Chancellor, Felix Matos Rodriguez, here on the campus of John Jay College of Criminal Justice to chat with our newest CUNY graduates. Sir, welcome and thank you for joining us in person. Thank you, Tina Beth, and I'm so happy to be with you all today in person. Congratulations to all you outstanding scholars for graduating at the top of your class. You've shown the true power of resiliency this academic year. Despite the multiple challenges of learning remotely, you all persevere and actually excel. Being a graduate of the class of 2021 is a unique experience, something that will be remembered throughout the annals of academic history. What a joy it is to actually see your faces. Last year, at this time, we were all remote and this remarkable event was conducted virtually. I'm incredibly proud of what CUNY accomplished virtually during this very long pandemic year when faced with such adversity. And I'm so proud of all of you for facing each challenge so successfully. And so again, a heartfelt congratulations on your accomplishments in this most difficult of years. Uh, due to COVID protocols, we are shooting this in two sets of students. So this is the first group, and I want to welcome all of you. And our first question is, so Adina, tell me, what brought you to CUNY? I was really excited to join the CUNY community, and most specifically, uh, the Macaulay community has been phenomenal in helping me foster um, and truly hone the skills to become a leader and an activist. and an innovator of the future of New York City and um, I was particularly drawn to the diverse voices that Macaulay and CUNY especially um, invites and I feel incredibly held and I feel that I've heard many voices that I would not have heard on a private campus um, and I feel so honored to be in Manhattan. What about you Lashema? I actually started my, my journey in college 23 years ago at John Jay College. I didn't finish here. I ended up going to other universities to complete my degrees. But the reason why I came back to complete this math, the master's that I just completed at CUNY, is because I remembered when I first started my journey, the love that I received here, the care that I received here, and realizing that going to private institutions was not better than going to a CUNY university where it was very affordable. I started at 18 when I first started. I'm 41 years old now. Um, this is my third master's and this is the most affordable one. I didn't need a student loan to pay for it. And um, the, the quality of the education was, it was just the same as if I went to a private institution. And the care and love that I got from the school that I just graduated, which was school, CUNY School of Professional Studies, it was amazing. So I felt this was the best choice for me and my family. Thank you. Okay, so Irene, what accomplishment are you the most proud of? Um, I think the biggest for me of course, getting the Salutatorian Award, which was, which was amazing, but it was also like CUNY wasn't just like by by itself. Like um, I went to Government Community College, so CUNY gave me the opportunity not only just to like also stay in it, but also like, just branch out. Chancellor, when you hear these answers, how does it make you feel? Oh, well, you know, it makes you feel incredibly proud um, and. Um, being chancellor is sometimes a complicated job, uh, but like I tell my, my two boys, my two teenage boys, uh, you do go to bed at night knowing that there's stories like this. You stay in touch with some of the students and you see them in their trajectory and they do go in to, you know, to change the world. So uh, it, you know, it gives me great pride and now that we are at a time when we need to re rebuild New York and get our city back, uh, there's no better talent than the talent of all the universities from the Senior University of New York. So all those people out there that they're hiring, the best talent is here at CUNY. Uh, people who are looking for individuals who are gonna do advanced degrees, the best talent is also here at CUNY. So uh, 
very proud and also very hopeful about the future. So thank you all for, for all that. Something I want Shilpa to share, which I think is interesting. What was the most significant obstacle during your time at CUNY? So during my junior year, which was the year that, you know, in my head, I was like, I could ace the LSAT. This is what's going to prepare me academically for school. Unfortunately, my dad got COVID. Um, he was a mail carrier and he was hospitalized for about three months during which we didn't know if he was going to make it. Like almost every single day, the phone call was, we're probably going to have to pull the plug. Um, so it was really difficult for me during that period of time to focus on my studies, to study for the LSAT. But the support that I received at CUNY was no other. All of my professors were so on board about understanding about my assignments. Um, in terms of applying to law school, they sat with me um, and they believed in me, which uh, I can say wholeheartedly today that I would not be attending law school and going straight through without those professors. So. Shona, tell me, how has your personal journey been affected by your time at CUNY? Because you came all by yourself to the U.S. So seven years ago, I dropped out of high school in China and I moved to New York by myself. Yeah, so the first two years, I was just working at the restaurants, doing different jobs. It's just reached to a point, I was like, no, I need to go to college so I can do other jobs. So I started to prepare for the GED exam. On the first, first attempt, I scored 499 on reading and guess the passing score was 500. I was like one point missed. Yeah, so I got to, I had to retake that exam. So I got the certificate um, in March 2017. So by that time, there was like CUNY was my, basically my only choice. Yeah, but that was not great, yeah. So even though I again failed the writing test for the college exam, like the entrance exam, and then I had to, I had to take a remedial writing classes. Yeah, but I'm still, I'm graduating with 4.0 GPA. You must feel so proud about that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta be. Congratulations for that. That's awesome. Catherine, how has your personal journey been affected by your time at CUNY? CUNY has solidified my desire to become a doctor by providing me with so many incredible research and shadowing experiences. But it has also shown me the importance of access to resources, equity, and inclusion because going to school in Manhattan surrounded by a diverse body of students from all different socioeconomic backgrounds has showed me how important it is to really see how access to resources affects people's achievement outcomes and health outcomes. So as a physician, I hope to work towards reducing healthcare disparities across New York City communities and incorporating that into my practice to truly better understand and empathize with patients. Well, what was it about CUNY that made you come to CUNY? Definitely the location and the affordability. Because the location, I'm a city girl. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, born and bred, and I just love the art and culture of Manhattan. I go to Hunter College, which is three blocks away from Memorial Sloan Kettering and Weill Cornell, which are incredible opportunities to research at for pre-health students. But also affordability, because I'm the oldest student of three, and me and my two other siblings all go to CUNY. So knowing that medical school is gonna be really expensive, um, but also my parents have to put three students through college and we're all getting incredible education, so much support from our advisors and professors and it's been, it's been the best experience. Shilpa, what brought you to CUNY? My family experienced a little bit of financial issues by the time that I was graduating. My dad ended up losing his job, so I knew I needed to pick an institution that would be both affordable but also allow me to um, pursue everything that I wanted. And then the Macaulay program is amazing because here I am graduating debt free and that really gave me the opportunity to pick whichever law school I want to go to now because now I'm not carrying this, you know, undergrad debt with me. So CUNY has fully supported me um, and I, I'm so happy to be here. And how awesome is the Macaulay program? I grew up in New Hyde Park, which is part of Long Island, and I never really got to venture into the city as much as a child. But Macaulay program, your first class that you take, you're touring around New York City. So you get to see all of these jewels that you would not be exposed to if you were not part of that program as well. Shama, I have to ask you, for all the years that you've been part of the CUNY family, what accomplishment 
are you the most proud of? Um, I had a horrible year. Like, next Saturday, June 5th, will be the one year anniversary of my mom's passing. Um, and it was an unexpected passing, which makes it even more difficult because of COVID. It's like, at least if it was that, it was like, it was understandable, but to still not know and to still come into the program, I did this program in one year, even though I could have done it part time, I didn't want to give my time to um, school for another two years to do a part time. I also teach in a um, de de youth detention facility. So it was like having to be home with my family all day long teaching. I have three children at home, college student, an eighth grader, and uh, um, a third grader. So having three children at home, doing remote learning, me being a remote teacher, dealing with depression and grief from the loss of my mom, and still graduating with a 4.0 average, and being selected as the, the uh, commencement speaker, like I will say this, out of all the years that I've ever gone to school, this is my most accomplished moment. Oh, that's fantastic, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. That's very, that's fantastic. Irene, I know you wanted to ask, you wanted to answer why you came to CUNY, so why CUNY? Yeah. I have two older brothers and they both went to CUNY too. They already graduated and I think the biggest thing for me was that um, I'm a first-gen immigrant so my parents really gave everything to me. Like in the CUNY system, it's such a great education system that it was amazing that um, we all have the chance to get a college degree that not, not everyone can get and um, of course like afford it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And Adina, for you, how has your personal journey been affected by your time at CUNY and being part of the CUNY community? I think that I was most impacted um, in real, really two avenues of the CUNY system. Um, for starters, I was able to join the NCAA tennis team, which is simply not something I would have been able to do at University of Michigan or the other schools that I was considering. Um, and having the opportunity to have a team and a community within a college of 26,000 students, I felt both held, I felt like I had pals um, and real teammates. And I, I really struggle with a couple learning disabilities um, and dyslexia is number one. Um, and with the Office of Accessibilities at Hunter and at other campuses when I took a bunch of e-permits to experience the diverse campuses and voices of the different CUNYs, I was really accommodated. And more than that, I learned that it's possible to love learning. It didn't need to be simply a source of fear and um, I didn't need to beat myself up because I couldn't read a textbook or couldn't read the board by the time that the board had changed um, and the slides had changed and I feel immense gratitude for those accommodations and more importantly I, I feel immense gratitude to have learned that I can be smart despite these struggles. Yeah. Well thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure you're going to be an inspiration to other kids who are going to see this program. Thank you to Irene, Lashima, Adina, Shauna, Catherine, and Shilpa for taking the time to be with us in person and especially being the Chancellor. I think that's awesome. No, thank you. Hi, my name is Asma Awad and I am this year's valedictorian of Brooklyn College. What that means to me can be summed up by a message that I'd received in response to my campus's post on LinkedIn. Reading about me and reading about my journey had inspired a conversation between him and his daughter about a career in tech. Sometimes all it takes is to see somebody that looks like you in the field. And if I could be that person for somebody, that makes this opportunity all the more valuable. Thank you and congratulations, everybody. Hello, my name is Chandri Johnson, also known as CJ, and I was selected to be Baruch's 2021 Salutatorian. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to recognize and reflect on my journey over the past four years. Finally graduating and having this honor has proven to me that the value I placed in my activities, work, and relationships was exemplified through the resilience I had in overcoming obstacles. When I'm confident in my passions and my motivations are internally driven, I will always find success in my path. Thank you. 
What it means to be a valedictorian is what it means to be any student at Hunter. Everybody that I've met has been incredibly kind, compassionate, and intelligent. And the fact that we made it is just a testament to our resiliency. I also wanted to mention that I personally lost my father to COVID-19 recently, and I loved him very much. He inspired me to do everything. He made me who I am today, and my heart really goes out to anybody who's lost a loved one during this time. And to anybody who faced any sort of hardship, you made it, you're here, and you're incredible. Thank you so, so much. Hi, my name is Anna, and I'm the Queen's College student speaker. It's a great privilege to have been nominated by faculty for this opportunity. And although I believe that it is impossible for just one student to represent the entirety of the diverse student body of Queen's College, I hope that my words at the ceremony will resonate with my peers. Because now, we have at least one thing in common. We're QC alum. Being student speaker reinforces my belief in community action, representation, and the need to lead compassionately. Thank you again for this honor, and a congratulations to all the graduates. Good afternoon. My name is Lala Moses. I'm a business administration major at Gutman Community College. It's been such a tough year. And being the valedictorian for me is a reminder that it is always possible. It's a motivation for the journey ahead as getting an associate degree is just one step towards achieving my college degree goals. Thank you. As a first generation Indo-Caribbean immigrant, obtaining my degree as class valedictorian is a grand feat. But my degree signifies something much greater than me. It is the beginning of my lineage moving toward a future that is filled with opportunity. Education empowers and enables us to make socioeconomic progression while allowing us the freedom to choose the trajectory of our lives. It is an honor and a privilege to be educated in the United States and is one that I will continue to honor throughout my future endeavors. And now, this is our second group of valedictorians and salutatorians. Welcome! I'm excited to have you. The chance was excited to have you. So, I'm going to ask you first, Kofi. Tell me, what brought you to CUNY? What was it about CUNY and several CUNY schools, from what I understand, that keeps you coming back for more? I wanted um, cost-effective um, education, but also one that was in um, an urban and diverse environment and CUNY happens to meet all of those. It's cost effective, it's in an urban environment and it's very diverse. So these are the things that I was looking out for and these are the very things that they bring me back to CUNY all the time. Nicole, same question. What is it about CUNY that has made you go, you go to CSI, right? Right. So what is it about CUNY that brought you to CUNY? What attracted you exactly? I researched CSI and realized that CSI is a part of a huge university, CUNY. And I was like, okay, um, I love CSI. The, the pictures are great. The programs that they offer are great as well. And they also have in, um, scholarships for international students. So I applied to six CUNY schools. You ask me right now what brought me to CUNY is the diversity, the challenges that help students to come out of their comfort zone and become a better person and I'm experiencing that now. Okay, how does that make you feel when you hear answers like that? Uh, hearing answers like that makes me inspired by my peers and my teachers and the faculty at the colleges. Um, makes me feel very connected to them to know that we all come from such different backgrounds but um, fundamentally have the same goals in mind and the means to achieve them. Sure, and what accomplishment are you the most proud of during your time at CUNY? I am proud to just have made it through undergraduate education in this pandemic. It's been incredibly frustrating for all of us, so I am very proud to have made it through without letting my grades slip, but also I remained social and active and um, remained an advocate within, within the college. Um, so socially I didn't fall off, and that is the biggest accomplishment for me. NS, what, had, what, what was the accomplishment that you were the most proud of? Just this past February, actually, I had the opportunity to uh, exhibit my, a TEDx talk uh, through CUNY, through a TEDx CUNY, in the beginning of my uh, college career. I was a very nervous and shy person, you know? And just having the opportunity to really develop myself to really understand what really I'm passionate about and to be able to exhibit that through a TEDx CUNY stage has been something very, something, something that's humbled me a lot, something that's made me uh, very proud, you know, to be a CUNY student, to be able to do something to that scale. Megan, you're up next. So, 
What was the most significant personal obstacle you had to overcome to succeed at CUNY? I think my most significant obstacle was balancing a work schedule and a full class schedule. There were two semesters where I balanced working two jobs with a full class schedule. Um, and then I was really worried. One semester I got a four credit internship and I was worried about how I was going to pay for my tuition. Um, but then I got a scholarship, a scholarship through the Hunter um, Office of the Arts, so I was able to complete my internship and pay for tuition uh, that semester. So. That's awesome. And since he's on you right now, how has your personal journey been affected also by your time at CUNY? And I've also had so many opportunities through my classes to visit museums and have full out classes in prints and drawings departments in the actual major museums like the Met and the Whitney, which is really great. Yeah, it's awesome. When you guys hear everybody else's answers, how in awe are you of one another? Because it's got to be pretty cool. It's got to be pretty inspiring to hear everyone else's stories. Kofi, how does it make you feel? I believe it's a confirmation of what uh, CUNY represents, that it represents, um, like I said, this diverse group of people, but also it represents opportunity, opportunity to have upward mobility and opportunity to, to grow and learn at the same time. And for my personal uh, situation, I went through a community college and then I went to School of Urban Studies and now I'm doing my Master's at Baruch College, undocumented. And I'm happy to say this because there is no other way, there is no other pathway for someone like me, there are about 11 million of us in this country, to have that upward mobility that we all dream of, the American dream. So, I mean, this is the only pathway I believe. Outside of this, I can't imagine anything, especially with, with private colleges. Part of my job is to go out there and get money for the students and one of the monies that I'm more proud of is the Chancellor's Fund because it allows to give some uh, support to students that were undocumented and, um, and international that were not included. The support from the philanthropic community that gave to that fund so that we can support some of the students that were in need uh, but not, were not being included uh, really by some you know, racist policies in, in that first uh, stimulus package. So. So Nicole, how, how inspiring is this, hearing everyone? Just like he said, it's a confirmation that CUNY represents diverse, resilient, and just very interesting students. You know, I come from a Egyptian American background. My mother and father immigrated from Egypt to America uh, right before I was born. And they came here for the intention to really give us an education that could really better us down the road. Some opportunities that they did not have the ability to have. And for me, just being able to be part of CUNY, to really grow myself as a person, to really make the most out of it, has been something very, very humbling and very inspiring just to be a part of. Uh, one of the reasons I came to CUNY in the first place was because I was adamant, so passionate about staying in New York, working in New York, and contributing to the community in which I grew up. I'm a native New Yorker and I, you know, generations deep. My father worked for the FDNY for over 25 years. Oh, this is like, this is like, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, in order to get on the job, he did not receive a, a degree, but he took credits at CSI. That afforded him the chance to go and get a job that would support him and his family for the rest of our lives. Um, and I've also been able to study the FDNY and civil service of New York City through CUNY because we're still also deeply connected. It's the New York uh, strength. I mean, this is, this is representative of uh, this uh, great and lovely and complicated uh, city that, that we call home, right? That uh, allows uh, individuals with two, three, four generations of New Yorkers to feel deeply grounded here and also welcomes a new immigrant, right? Uh, Looking forward to, to the next semester and uh, incredibly inspired and, uh, and going back full of hope with uh, your stories and your example of perseverance and, uh, and excellence. Thank you guys so much for taking the time today to join us in person. This is fantastic and I'm inspired by each and every, believe it or not, I am, by each and every one of you. I really truly am. Thank you. Thank you.